Bro, do you even lift? Like, seriously, look at this. This is ridiculous. All right. Well, I guess I'm holding that now. Yeah, you don't usually see boulders this big, but when you do, definitely take advantage and heal them up or grab them when you can. So we're heading into the cave here. This is on the way to basically the third shrine of the thing. And anytime you go into a cave, this comes up and tells you what cave you just got into. And every single cave in the game has a thing in it that we'll probably get into later, but we might see it here. I don't remember if you can, like, have access to it at this point. But yeah, so when you're in a cave, always look carefully for, like, rock walls that you can destroy. Sometimes it can be a little hard to see them. It's kind of cool how you can see tree roots down here, too. I just love the environmental details that went into this. Oh, hey, there's Keith right there. Do we have arrows on him? Probably not. Although I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world. Oh, no. There we go. Let's get rid of him. So we have Keith's wing, and perhaps one of the most useful items in the game. Keith's eyeball. Attach that to an arrow. I mean, you already know this. You've seen it in the trailers. Attach it to an arrow, and it causes that arrow to turn into a homing arrow. These are stones which you mine for stones. Interesting. <laughs> Definitely some of the best money you can make in the game comes from them. Hey, hello, here it is. I wish I had my camera on me right now, because I don't have to get in the cabin and doing that. So, you'll see this is called a bubble frog. We don't know that right now, and also we can't kill it with one arrow yet. We'll be able to later in the game when you're more powerful, but... So like, most of the time, you'll get used to beating those in one hit. But when he goes away, he turns into a bloopy, for some reason. And then he drops this, which is a bubble gem. <gasps> this is yet another collectible in the game. Which, like, I won't spoil who it's for or anything yet, but, like, once again, it's like, probably <laughs> If you don't, then that's fine, too. Right, so grab these before I forget, and let's head back here. Grab this. Alright, we got Flint. Hey, that's my name in Pokemon Black, too. Alright. Kind of named myself after Fire, just like Blaze did. Worked out pretty good. This is a giant Bright Bloom Seed. You're going to be finding so many of these, like, pretty much every cave you go into is going to have these by the dozens. Maybe not so much the giant ones, but these small ones like this, every single plant like this, is three Bright Bloom Seeds. And over here, it's three more. So we already have 15 of these. You know, and it's not going to be long before you're going to have three digits number of these. So, for the time being, we don't have a lot of other ways to get rid of this. So, but there will be other ways later. So, all back here is more stones, but look at this, though. This one's more of a gold. So when you see a gold one, you definitely want to hit it, because you usually get something pretty valuable from it. In this case, we got a ruby, which is good. And, like, selling stones early in the game is not a bad idea. It's, there's always going to be more. There's plenty of stone taluses and shit to fight out there that will give you more of those. So, we already got the bubble frog, so we don't really have to worry about that. But, yeah, each cave has a bubble frog in it. It's usually hidden pretty well. So, definitely. Okay, so somehow, I don't know what happened my first time playing this game. Somehow, I missed this chest. Don't miss this chest. And here's why. Okay, yeah. Not the greatest thing in the world, but I spent the first, like, maybe six hours of this game with literally one defense, because the only chest I found was the archaic legwear. So I was going around naked all this time. Dear God, I died so many times, you would have no idea. So, yeah. And the difference between one defense and even two defense is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty notable. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's a better word than that, but oh well. Hey, we got more boxes over here. We got more ball here. And since we have so many weapons with rocks on them, I think it's worth it actually bust up the weapons a little bit just to get this done faster. And uh, we can bust a few up there, too. Barrels probably have arrows, too. Pots, you never know what they'll have, but yeah. I don't usually break them, to be honest. This doesn't really seem worth it. Usually it's just nothing. Yeah, it's like nothing. A lot of constructs out here, and also Raru. Hello. Mm. The steward constructs were the first to be built. After that, we crafted others suited to different roles. Culinary constructs, maker constructs, you'll find all sorts of them still active in this place. But eventually they became the Polaris constructs, and, you know, everything just went to shit after that. Some became so skilled within their specialties that they surpassed us. We began to learn from them instead. You should take time out to talk to them. They can teach you many things you might not yet know. Or maybe you do. Hello. Hello, Mario. The rats are damaged. We are unsure how to proceed. We will reconsider the problem at dawn after resting. 
Ah, so you're talking at night, you get different dialogue, huh? Well, it's almost done now. And you owe. The wraps are broken. We are exhausted from trying to fix them. Currently, we are resting from this task. At least the Zonai device is undamaged. Yes, they are special tools that we employ. They are necessities here. I recommend that you learn how to use them. Ask the construct in front of the fan for details. I will return to my rest. Alright then. Well, there's the fan, and here's the construct. Yo, what's up? The rest for crossing the other side are broken. Transportation is on hold indefinitely. This is ordinarily where we send resources across the river. The only silver lining is that these Onai devices are undamaged. Ah, it seems you do not know of these. Let me tell you all about them. Or maybe I'll just let him do it later. I don't know. So remember how I said to think of that thing as your MP gauge? Let me see, does it show? Yeah, right up there above where it says arrow, there's like a battery looking thing there. That's your MP. That's how I prefer to think of it. Because, like, my first time playing this, there was so much jargon. Jargon. I say that word. But, like, there was so much about, you know, Zonai devices, and there's charges, and there's batteries, and there was just, like, so much there that I had a hard time keeping up with what was what. Anyway. So what I'm doing here, in case you couldn't tell, is building a raft. This is another thing they kind of showed in the trailer, so maybe no need for me to really explain too much here. But these are Zonai devices. These are what will use your MP. Your MP regenerates over time, so do not worry about using it. Go ahead and set the raft on the water here. As long as I set it there, it's not going to go anywhere. I don't know. You could build a bigger one if you want. Like, you could add another log. And if you wanted to, you could just add one, like, vertically for no reason whatsoever. Maybe just because you feel like it. Here, put a log on there. Well, okay, maybe that's not such a good idea. But let's see if this works. <laughs> now I'm curious. Oh my god, it's not actually going to fall over. My god. Uh, maybe we can fix that. Jeez, why am I doing this? I should have just gotten rid of the vertical one. Oh well, now I'm all obsessed. So here. There we go. Now it's down. But now it actually weighs more, so the fans might not do as much to, to move it. But that's what we're about to... Oh. <laughs> oh well, I should have guessed. Alright, alright, fine. We'll get rid of the verts. It's fine enough the way it was. Why did I have to go and change crap? Maybe I should have just put it in the middle. So notice now my battery is draining. That's because the Zonai devices are running, the fans. There's 25 different types of Zonai devices in the game. You notice how we really don't have any control over this thing? Well, this is what bothered me at first about the vehicles. I was like, well, what's the point of building a vehicle that you have no control over? Like, is there really a point? And it turns out there is. There is a way to control them. You won't see that till later, but it's... It's worth mentioning now, just so you have the reassurance of knowing that it's not like you just build something, launch it off somewhere, and then, well, you do kind of never use it again, which that bothers me a little bit, but that's just the nature of the beast, really. So we got something here, another rusty broadsword, which we can't hold. We can grab this flint, though, and maybe go ahead and bust up some more boxes. Here. Just broke my weapon, how about that? It's a good thing there just happened to be one sitting here that I can grab to replace it. How about that? I'll take the rusty broadsword. Oh, hello. I didn't even see you there. What's up? Oh, are you going this direction? This mountain path is especially rugged. You must take your environment into account when traveling. I have developed guidelines for traveling this mountain path. Shall I tell you them? Yeah, show me it. Fire is a crucial tool when traveling the mountain path. A fire can be used either to cook or to warm yourself. Uh, yeah. Got it. Yeah, I can cook. I know. I know what I'm doing. There's a stand bulb right there. Somehow I didn't pick it up all this time. So now we're headed up the mountain. We're getting kind of close to the other shrine here. We haven't really gone through the mine yet, though, have we? Wait, is this right? Is this the way we go? Feels like I should be going over this way. Yeah. Well, let's just see what's up here. Maybe it'll kind of lead us there by... Oh, I see. So we're kind of going under this circular island here. That's a big old piece of the puzzle right there. And you're going to be going in, under, and all around it, but you're never really going to see what's on it just yet. Hmm. Oh, look at this. We got a little hole here. Maybe you should check it out. Um, if you can't break rocks because they're under you, what you can do... Well, I mean, if you play the first game, you know this. Oh. Yeah, so sometimes what happens is you get yourself like, automatically dunking. Well, that worked. Not sure why. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, you'll never catch fall damage this early in the game. They'll always make it so that you don't. We got some stuff here. More Zonai charges. Don't forget to grab these. Yeah, let's grab those. We're getting a lot of rush rooms here, I tell you. I can never forget that that first that quest in the first game where you had to get 60 of them for a guy. Like, good lord, man. And they were pretty hard to find, too. It's not like that other quest where you had to get 100 flies or whatever that was. Anyway. Boop. Yeah, look at that. No sweat. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's all we had to do here. Well, wait a minute, though. I don't have the other ability yet, so, like, how am I gonna get out of here? You know, I guess we're just gonna climb. Okay, it's not as far up as I thought, as I was like, mm. it seemed a lot further going down. <laughs> I guess it always does, though. So are we finally gonna climb these stairs? Like, or do dilly dallying about this all day long? Um, let me double check my map here. You know, hang on a second here. Am I on the right elevation to do that, or is there something above us? Oh, it's above us, okay. Well, never mind then, I guess we can't do that just yet. Alright, never mind. Never mind that now, never mind that now, 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 now. It's gonna take its four videos to get off this island the way it's looking. Hey, look at here. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Ow, nice try. I mean, not a nice try, that was a nice hit. Any trying involved there. Yeah, if you get a big one, you can snag yourself five of those two two jellies. Five big batches of biscuits, baby. There's like a track going along down there. I wonder what that could be about. Let's find out. <laughs> Shall we? It's really got no use for tree branches at this point, so let's continue on up. Oh, watch that stamina meter, I'm telling you, man. Oh, it's so easy to forget. Mm. Also be mindful of your scenery and how beautiful it is, and never hesitate to appreciate it. Never hesitate to stop and appreciate it. Some more bird eggs in the tree? Let's find out. Because if there are, we can definitely grab them. Much to the chagrin of the mother, I imagine, but... That's where we just came from. There's mine carts here. You can actually grab these with your ultra hand. And I'm on the tracks, like so. And they kind of clink into place, which is very nice. I'm not going to bother with those, though, because I want to grab the bright bloom seeds that are in here. And this is another cave, the mining cave. Ha ha ha. So here's another thing, another example of my glaring stupidity. You get into this cave, you can't see shit. The game tells you at some point that you can throw stuff. Well, I told you that in the other shrine. But for some reason, I didn't pick up on the fact that bright bloom seeds were meant to light up the area. And so... Oh, where are they? I always miss them because they kind of blend in. So I went, my first time through, I went through this cave completely blind. And even now, I couldn't tell you how I did it. But yeah, but if you if you throw down a bright balloon seed, it'll light up the moment it touches a wall or a floor or anything, basically. And then you can just you know, see where you're going and what you're doing, and it's a lot better. The giant ones will light up a larger area, but you might want to save those for a certain other place. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. This cave is especially dark. You will need a light in order to proceed to the mining site ahead. Do you have any bright bloom seeds? Yes, I do. What a relief. You would not otherwise be able to see anything as you proceed. See, he tells you this right here. Like, why didn't I listen? I don't know. Maybe I just didn't talk to him or something? Hmm. Maybe I just saw the word bright bloom and thought, Oh, that's too big of a word. I don't want to learn about that. No, no. Just keep teaching me about 5 plus 5 is 10. I don't know. That's like something I would totally think to. Anyway, look around here, see if there's anything. Eh, not really. This is a pretty good mining cave for where we are in the game. Like, seriously. We got a luminous stone right here. Boom! One shot. No, that's actually Zonite. Okay, Zonite. <laughs> Zonite is another thing that you get in the game, and I'm not even sure how to really describe what role it fulfills. Yeah. It's like MP, but it doesn't really refill your MP. Zonite charges refill your MP. Zonite itself is something entirely different. Zonite is used to build the materials that consume the MP. And if I would have just had somebody to tell me that in that in those words, then I might have understood all this a lot sooner, but I didn't, so <laughs> I don't know. But bam, get yourself some Zonite here. You can This is another thing that you can never have too much of. 
That should be a top 10 list for me in this game. The top 10 things you can never have enough of in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh man, it's getting a little bright in here, isn't it? Well, I don't know if we really need a seed for this. We can kind of see what we're doing already. If you can position yourself to hit two of those in one swing, that always feels good. I don't think it, like, uses less durability that way, but, oh well. So he's got some seeds over here, but don't touch them. They're his. Hmm. Apologies for not noticing you. I was focused on processing Zonite. Oh, are you unfamiliar with it? This is the Zonite I mentioned. It is a unique mineral that can be my when it's on my below. They run through chains of deposits of it on this island as well, but they are limited to the gate. <gasps> or oh, since I yet flew by processing the Zonite into other materials. I am so sorry for about this voice. Okay, I'll just, I'll stop now. Um, yeah. So like I was saying, Zonite used to make Zonite parts. But also, you can trade it in for battery upgrades. In a roundabout way of speaking, Zonai technology is typically powered by Zonai charges. These occasionally solidify into a form known as crystallized charges. See what I mean about all this, you know, all this jargon? Zonai charges, crystallized charges. Zonai charges are what power Zonai devices and constructs. They're basically the same as the small Zonai charges that we've been picking up. Well, I think those are actually the small ones. There are large ones, too. So you can use that to replenish your energy cell, a.k.a. MP meter. Crystallized charges are something totally different, just don't even think of them as the same thing. They are collectibles that when you get enough of them, you upgrade your max MP. That's how it works. That's all you need to know right there. About that. While there is a point in the game where you can trade your MP restoring items for these to upgrade the MP permanently, but it's debatable whether or not that's worth it. I kind of don't think it is. Because there's ways that you can grind these crystallized charge things and just upgrade your battery without ever having to give up your Zonite. Because you're going to need your Zonite to make stuff, and believe it or not, you can make some pretty ass... Wow. I should say that. Pretty ass. Some pretty cool ass stuff, but it will cost Zonite to do it. And it will cost a lot of it. Like, if you're building, like, a basic vehicle or something... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to finish that off for you there. Um... Yeah, like, even the cheapest stuff, it basically is, like, three Zonite per part. So if you have something that's, like, like two fans and a control stick, for example, which is a pretty common vehicle that people use in the game, then that's nine Zonite every time you want to make one of those. And when you make it, you're going to fly it around, and then you're going to lose it, because carrying it around is too much of a pain in the ass, so it's better to just make another one. Especially if you're way up in the sky and you jump off of it to get to a sky island, it's just going to fall to the ground, and God knows where it's going to be then. So, it, more than likely, it'll just despawn, is what'll happen. When stuff gets too far away, that's what happens, it despawns. So. Oh yeah, I was about to get on the subject of, like, how stuff respawns in this game, and I never really elaborated on it. But yeah, stuff that you pick up, like, you know, apples, stem bulbs, or pretty much any kind of plant, or, uh, you know, stuff like that, it'll respawn at a rate of... What it, what it does is it has a 1% chance of respawning every minute. So, basically, if you wait about two hours, it's pretty likely it will have respawned. If you have a group of something where there's like ten of it, and you wait two hours, when you go back, it's pretty likely there's going to be eight or nine or maybe even all ten of them respawn. But there's one small caveat to, the, to stuff respawning in this game. And um, so what it is, is apparently the map is divided into 80 sections. People say 80, but I wonder if it's not 81, so that it would be like a 9x9 nine nine grid, because that seems like it would be easier, like for a computer to remember or understand or whatever. But uh, people say 80, so maybe it is 80, I don't know. I don't know if it's exact squares that it's divided into, or rectangles, and it's like 10x8 maybe. So anyway, let me just stop to explain this. These are your Zoni devices here. These are the things that use MP, and you can basically take one out almost any time you want to. There's times when you can't, and I'm not sure I completely understand what causes that, but it will happen occasionally. You also can't take them out in shrines, so you kind of have to use whatever the shrine gives you. Otherwise, shrines would be way too breakable. Anyway, get in here and just turn it on, and watch as my MP goes down. But, and we got ourselves a nice little minecart ride. Very safe, very practical. Boy, howdy. Yeah, the first time I did this, like, I was just like, wow. This actually works. 
it's crazy when you see it for the first time and like this actually works. I mean, it's astoundingly amazing. And once it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. You can leave it on. There's really no reason to though. Hello. The time bell that sounds from the Temple of Time rings at a set time each morning and evening. Along with the constructs, we woke to the sound of the bell. Excuse me, I was using the wrong voice. When we heard it in the evening, we knew it was time to rest. Hmm. It also played its part in our traditional ceremonies. In a way, it was this place's beating heart. The sight of the temple and the sound of its bells stir fond memories in me. Ah, yeah. So that thing about the 80 squares, the map being divided into 80 squares... Well, when I say that stuff has a 1% chance of respawning every minute, it won't have that 1% chance if you're in the same square of the map as it. It's like if you're in the same 80th of the map as the item, then it's not going to respawn at all. So you can't just stand there and wait for it, you know, you have to go somewhere else, and then it might respawn 1% chance every minute of that to happen. You just have to not be in the same square as it for that to be in effect. I know I spent a lot of time explaining that, but whatever. It was just probably worth mentioning, but... Yeah. So there's some shrines in this game that actually have a lot of arrows in them. And you can just go back to those shrines every couple of hours and get more arrows. I'll tell you which ones they were when we get to them. That's how I like to grind arrows, because, once again, you can never have too many of them. These are actually up pretty high right here right now. Is this, like, where I think it is? Because I don't think we're on this top island here. Notice how this island is, like, a little bit brighter than the rest? That's because it's higher up. You can tell the altitude of stuff by how dark it is. The darker it is, the lower it is, basically. So, yeah, but I think we're actually under this still. I'm not sure. Well, I guess I could look up and see. Maybe that's the... Wow, that's really high. Yeah, that is, because that's the same shape as the island on the map. See how it's the same shape? It's like two circles and a rectangle. Yeah, that's how high up that is. There's a treasure over there, though. I guess I did miss that. Let's go ahead and grab it while we're here. Making sure not to run out that stamina wheel. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, there's other stuff in here, too. There's an arrow. A couple of arrows. Energizing elixir. Yeah. I kind of wish if you had multiples of something like that, you could combine them to just make one. Because you do actually have a limit to how much food you can carry in this game. It's a crazy thing. They actually did put a limit on it, though, and I'm kind of glad they did. Because it just was getting to be too much. Too easy. It's already too easy anyway. Like the whole food situation. I'm not saying the game itself is easy, because there are times it'll still kick your butt. Wow, so weird. Definitely nowhere near that. Because I thought we were. I guess we're not. Okay. So anyway, we need to get back over here. Try to get back towards the shrine here. You can see the pin on the map. It's right up there. We're going to have to climb to get to that, though. This is where we just came in on the mine card just now. So, head off this way a little bit. And once again mess up my stamina wheel. Why would you do that? Let's see what we got over here. I thought I saw some constructs on the way in, but... Ooh, is this spicy? Oh, I thought that was spicy peppers. Wow, I must be blind as a bat, let me tell you. Ooh, got another cave over here. It's just kind of calling my name here. See another construct over there, and there goes the bell again. Time just keeps on passing, and we get nothing done here. <laughs> oh, hello! Check it out. Spicy peppers. That's what we want. Yeah, look around here, because there's actually many of these, and you want a lot of them. I think there's some on the other side, too, but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it's getting low here. I don't want to mess with this. It's temperature. Well, oh, definitely remember that music. Good lord, man. I spent so much time just endlessly listening to that. I don't know. You know, to be honest, I kind of think it would have been cool if they had written multiple music tracks for some of the areas. You just got a random one each time. I don't know. Excuse me, the snowy mountain above us is extremely cold. Unprepared travelers will swiftly lose vitality and may even die. Are you fortified against the cold? Uh, how? Insufficient preparation can lead to death in harsh environments. My advice can avert this. Please listen carefully. The primary safeguards that used by our creators were meals that warmed them. Oh, right. Gee, why did I even ask about that? I should know better. So we got spicy peppers. We'll hold... I think we might as well just hold five of them. Let's go ahead and make the deal. Get ourselves 12 minutes and 30 seconds of that sweet cold resistance. Got a few more bright bloom seeds here. Don't say the wrong word again. It's not light bloom. It's bright bloom. <laughs> I don't know why I get that so messed up. So this is another cave. 
You'll, you can tell it counts as a cave because you see it on the map, the little cave symbol right here. And when you get the bubble frog from the cave, it'll put a little check mark next to the cave indicating that you did it, like right here. So, yeah. So we didn't get the one in this cave, apparently. That's kind of strange. Well, so, he's got more pizza all up in here. Oh, jeez, man, good timing. Shouldn't be using two-handed weapons on this. Uh, was that, like, two different keys there? Because I hit the one, and I heard him shriek. And then there was, like, another one there. <laughs> Weird. Alright, I guess we can look a little bit here for the bubble frog, I mean. Obviously, these are the first few caves. They're gonna be pretty easy to find at first. They won't always be so easy to find, but man... I tell ya. Yeah, there he is right there. He's like falling down into something here. What is this all down here? I don't know. Maybe we should go find out. Mmm, yeah, he does jump around a little bit, but it's not too bad. Ah, I keep trying to paraglide. And there we go. Bubble Jam! And now if you look at the map, you'll see our cave has a little nice question mark, or check mark next to it. I did this in G.I. Joe, too. I can call them question marks. Hey, there's another ruby. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at all the bright blue seeds down here. This is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, wow. Yeah, something else. Oh, and guess what we got here? What could this be? Oh. It's the way forward. I wasn't expecting that. Oh no, this just goes back to the beginning. Okay. Actually, that's even better. Well, why didn't you grab that? Alright, before we head into the great unknown here. You know, into the unknown! Sorry. But a lot of caves will have, like, two entrances. You'll go in one side and come out the other. And since they both go to the same cave, you find the bubble frog that is in that cave. It's still only one cave. It only counts as one. So... You'll get check marks on both entrances to the cave for the bubble frog that you found in it. Yeah, that's up here. Okay. There were more spicy peppers in here. I just didn't go far enough in. That's okay. I, I can't believe this taking this long. Good lord, man. Yeah, if you look up, you can see. Here we go. This is where we want to be. This is it. And there's more spicy peppers right there. Walking in the snow. Not a pleasant thought, and it's definitely not for Link either, because as you can see, we go a lot slower now. Even when we run, we're still going slow. There's a nice little Korok puzzle right over here. These are usually pretty easy. There's occasionally one that kind of messes me up, but... We'll just go over here, turn this around like that, and slip it in there. Taking it down, sticking it down, sticking it down, digging it, making a venomous it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good job. So, that was that one. Let's see. We got one to the southeast as well. Might as well grab that while we're here. If you already know where these are, they seem so easy to find. But when you're just wandering around and you don't know exactly where to look... Like, my first playthrough, I got, I think, 150 hours in. I found less than 200 of these. And my second playthrough, which I never technically even finished... I found about 50 of them before I just, like, gave up and started looking at a map. Then I started finding them, like, one a minute. Okay, so occasionally you'll see a dandelion like this. So the objective here is to hit it and then examine it in midair, which is basically press A when you're next to it, like this. What I usually do, though, is just jump down, stand under them, and look up, and then just mash A as they get closer to me. So you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. As long as you examine it, you're good to go. Head on up here. There is another cooking pot just up ahead, so... You know, if you need to cook more, you can do that there. There's actually a lot of cooking pots, but this is kind of the tutorial area, so it would make sense that they kind of take it easy on you here. Ooh, hello, sesame. Alright, I target down there. You can tell which one I'm fighting here. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's what we like to see. Oh god, three hits and he's dead, man. I'm using a two-handed weapon, though. Wait, I need to be jumping to the side. Like I said before, if it's spears, jump to the side. And I said spears, jump to the... side. Okay. Maybe we'll just fight it normal. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. 
a lot of times when you hit enemies with two-handed weapons, it will make them drop whatever weapon they're carrying. It won't always work. There's a lot of ways, actually, to make enemies drop their weapons in this game. Electricity is one, if that was the case in the first game. But there's also something called Dazzle Fruit in this game, which I did not use enough of my first time. Dazzle Fruits are pretty incredible, actually. A lot of those, like, weird status ailment things that you get in this game, there's also ones that cause monsters to become confused. And that's also surprisingly really useful. Maybe it's like further down, you just go further in, I don't know. Oh, jeez, what was that? Somebody set off a firework into the air? Oh, they're fighting the Chew Jollies, yeah. And so this guy's got a flame emitter, that's what that's called, fused to a weapon. And now he's dead. Not really. Mm. Now what I could do if I want is I could put something on my arrow, fuse it to an arrow. Fusing is not just for weapons, you can do it to arrows too. You can put these horns on here and add a little bit of damage. Just do a little extra damage. You may have even noticed that did more than the first hit. It definitely did. I don't usually do this much, but like, there's nothing else to do with these horns. So like, why not? You just gotta be mindful that if you are gonna fuse something to an arrow, you're taking a bigger risk by using up that material. But sometimes it's worth it if you don't want to get close to something because he has like a ranged attack like that. Flamey Matter Club, baby. Let's see. Do we have any weapons on it? Ah, I'm not going to use this thing. Much as I hate to admit it, I'm not going to. The dragon is still there. It's going in circles here. It's kind of curling in on itself. Like, how much... I don't know what time we're up to here. It feels like I've been going a while. <laughs> but it also feels like we're making dick for progress here. But I love this, though. I love just exploring like this. It's so good. What did I not... Oh, that's the weapon I just dropped. I thought there were, like, supplies that I didn't drop from him or didn't get from him. Like I said, too much dicking around. We're already running out of time on our first, like, uh, first spicy fruit here. Oh, it's another discovery. Hmm, just in the nick of time, too, huh? Okay, that Korok that I was trying to get earlier, I think he actually... It might be easier to just come back for this one later when we have the paraglider. I think he's, like, down there, but I don't want to, like, jump down there right now. We're trying to get up to the shrine. We're practically, like, directly under it right now. So we just need to take a few steps here. Hey, guess what we got? Bright bloom seeds, but also... Bomb flowers! Yeah! Oh, I hear the bubble frog. So you can hear it, actually. It makes a very distinct sound, and that sound we just heard was it. If you see water in the air, that's where it's coming from. Water in the air? Is that what I said? I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. I don't know. You probably don't want to, like, hit this guy with stuff that causes knockback, though. You don't want to knock him somewhere where you're not going to be able to get to the gem that he drops. So, get that. Keep going. Well, don't miss the stone. Either. Definitely don't miss these. Is there any more in here that I walked past? Because let me tell you, we'll be needing to do that. So this cave looks pretty cool. It's got a whole... Well, <laughs> you can practically see quite a bit from here. I think this is called the Bottomless Cave. I didn't see the name when it popped up. Just after a while, you just don't even pay attention to those. You see it so often, and you're just like, oh, there's words. Yep, we're in another place. We're in a place that's important. More bomb flowers. Remember how I said before now, if you see one, like, next to a tree, maybe check around the outside of the tree, and there's probably more. Might not necessarily be the same thing, but, yeah, it's worth a look. Oh, great. One of these freaking things. Okay, um... I really don't like life likes in this game. They're annoying. You have to sit around and wait for them to open their mouth, and they won't do it until you get really close to them, but then they kind of, sometimes they eat you in the process. What is my strongest weapon here? I just want to get rid of this thing. So, Ah, <laughs> oh, this is going to take two rounds, I think. I tell you. Maybe I should have attached something to the arrow I hit him with. Oh, oh, I used up my bow. Broke my bow. I broke my bow. Alright, you wanna, like, do that again here? Okay, so... It seemed not nearly as bad as before. Before, I had the hardest time with them. Like, they wouldn't show their vulnerable spot until I got close enough for them to eat me, and then they would just eat me. And it would be really annoying. So, like likes always drop a treasure chest, but it's rarely worth it. Like, you know, it's, well, I mean... At this point in the game, maybe, you know, when you're still struggling for just anything remotely valuable. 
But we already got two rubies, I think, so yeah, like, we're, we're doing okay in that department. As long as you're pretty thorough and you just kind of look at everything, you can come out of here with a pretty decent chunk of valuables that you can later sell to get whatever money you need to upgrade your armor or whatever you decide you want to do. And that's the beauty of it, though. You can just do anything you want. Let me, let me see what time I'm at here, because when I come out of this... Wow, 42 minutes already. Yeah, let's, uh... I don't mind these early parts being a little bit long, but they're not usually going to be this long, I don't think. So there was like another way to go over there, I don't know. Or was there? Maybe that was my imagination. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how many times I think it... Oh, there's another one. There's a chest behind him, though. Maybe we should get that. I'm going to attach a horn to this, so we do a little more damage. Hello. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, that was so loud when that hits, let me tell you. Now, if you want, you could hit him with a bomb flower, fused to an arrow. You're going to be using that a lot. Yeah, he's just coming out with the vulnerable spot now. I don't think they ever did that before. I don't know if they updated the game or that's much as my imagination. Could be my imagination. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's move on. Opal. Yeah. If you fuse opal to a weapon, it turns into kind of a water weapon, which can be cool. Mostly if it's like Zora Spears and stuff, there's a flame emitter. So that's another Zonai device, as you see. Occasionally, you're just going to be able to pull these out if you're carrying them. You can just carry, and you can carry as many of these around as you want. You will find device dispensers that will give you more. Okay, okay, so notice how... Notice how my cold resistance ran out, but I'm not freezing, even though I'm in the snow area. That's because caves are actually warm in this game. And that's kind of cool. You watch here, I go outside, it's unbearable cold. Go inside, I'm okay. So yeah, just a nice little detail. And there's all kinds of different things. If you stand in the shade when it's hot, you can stay cool. If you carry a weapon that has a ruby, or a shield even, that has a ruby attached to it, since ruby is fire elemental, that will keep you warm in the cold. Like, I could do that right now if I wanted to. Or if you, um, oh, there's so many ways. There's, like, an ability later. Did I get what was in here? What was in there? That wasn't, like, my next piece of armor, was it? Okay. Just making sure. Because I don't want to miss... Oh, I know where that is. What am I talking about? Let me go ahead and just eat up my thing here so I don't forget. That gives us 12 minutes right there, so we should be good. I'll tell you what. Next time on Tears of the Kingdom, we'll venture out and we'll get the shrine. We are so close right now. It's not even funny. I'm just going to rest in here and sleep until next time. Oh, man, I wanted to do that Nino Kuni thing in this video. Or in this, like, LP, but I'd have to find, like, grass to put the camera behind like I always do. I'm sure I can do it. Anyway, <laughs> there's, there it is right there. Okay, see you guys later. Goodbye.